Hello, I'm Chris Richter and welcome back. If you've been here before, if you haven't, make sure you like and subscribe and I will teach you in this video uh, a bit about Gradebook for Moodle 4.0. So this is taking you through the steps to create some activities, then how to put them into Gradebook or how the Gradebook part works in Moodle, and then a few different things or techniques you can use to make the Gradebook a little bit better for students, a bit more useful to students, and how to reorder things and uh, weightings and stuff like that. So let's get straight into it. What I've got first of all for you is Moodle 4.0. It is also a course that is completely blank, so I haven't done anything with it other than just well, create the course and call it Gradebook Moodle 4.0. To add anything to Gradebook, we need to add activities. But before we do that, let's just see what Gradebook looks like without anything. So if I go straight to Gradebook, which is to Grades, and you'll see there that we don't have any students in there yet. We don't have any grades. We have a grade total, and this is all that it looks like. Not very exciting at all. And if we switch that to the role of a student and go to the Student Grades view, that's what the student sees completely blank. So let's get started and we'll go into our course and create some items that will appear in Gradebook. So to do that, we just need to go back to our view as a teacher, turn on editing. So we're going to choose add an activity or resource. The two most common activities that appear in Gradebook are an assignment and a quiz. We're going to start with assignment. Straight into it, we'll call it assignment one. Won't worry about a description. I'm only going to set the most important parts to this. So I'll switch off due date and remind because I don't need that. I'm going to leave this as online text so we can test it without having to upload any files for our submission. Then the most important part that relates to Gradebook is obviously the grade. So scroll down to grade. We have a couple of options here. We've got point and scale. I'm going to show you both, but we'll start with point and we're going to assume that the maximum grade for Gradebook for this activity will be 100. And the grade to pass, we will make 80 just so that we can show you what that looks like. Everything else, I'm going to leave exactly the same. Don't need to change anything else. I'll just save and display. And this is what you get. An assignment number one. And we can set a grade from it. So let's look at Gradebook now. Jump back and see what Gradebook looks like now that we've added an assignment. We go to Gradebook and you can see now we have assignment one. The range is from 0 to 100. And the course total will be somewhere between 0 and 100. So that's all we've done so far, added one activity. We're going to add a quiz as well. So you can see how the quiz appears in Gradebook. So let's go add activity. Activity type is a quiz and we'll just call it quiz one. The only important part we need to worry about is grade. So grade to pass for our quiz. We're going to make a quiz out of 10 so that we have a bit of a variation in what's happening. Leave everything else how it is. We'll leave it as unlimited. All the rest can stay exactly the same save and display and here we have our quiz now i do need to add something to the quiz so i'm just going to jump off and do that and i'll be back in just two seconds what i've done is added a quick quiz so that we have some data in there the grade to pass is 10 out of 10 and the quiz is just two questions it is a multiple choice it is a true false and the correct answer is true i just wrote that there to remind me and the multiple choice uh, select one or more. The answer for the multiple choice is one is the correct answer. So that's the one we would choose if we did our attempt, finish, and we can publish and we have a quiz. Let's go to Gradebook and see what that looks like now. We've added an assignment and a quiz and you can see here assignment one, zero out of 100. Quiz one is zero out of 10. Now we need to add one more assignment to this to be able to show you the examples. So I'm going to add assignment number two. We'll add a second assignment. Assignment two, you can see we're just building our gradebook out of adding activities to gradebook or to Moodle. Make it online text again. The only thing we need is grade. This time though, we're going to choose scale and out of scale, I'll leave it as default competence scale. The difference here with the default competence scale is you either have the answer, uh, no response at all, which is worth zero in, point, in numbers or in a value, uh, not yet competent, which is one and competent, which is two. So a grade to pass is competent, which is two. So that's why we put two in the grade to pass. There's three values for this particular scale uh, called default competence. Again, it will make sense when we go into it. Don't add anything else. We just save and display. And we now have our assignment two all ready to go as well. Let's check what this looks like in the grade book. So we go to grades. We have a look. We've now got an assignment worth zero to 100. 
quiz worth 0 to 10, and assignment 2, which is either not yet competent or competent, or in our case, it's also uh, hasn't answered yet, which is worth 0. Notice the total is 112 is the maximum score they can get. So that's 100 for the first one, 10 for the next one, and then 2, which is the value of competent. That's all we need, and we've got Gradebook all ready to go. I'm now going to add a few students in there and put some results in for the students, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'll get these students to go in and complete some of the activities, and I'll show you the Gradebook from that point of view before we go in and start making any more changes. Okay, so I've now got our three students. They've completed some of the activities. So the three students are student, student two, student three, and I'm the teacher there. You can see all that. If I now jump to grades and we look at the grader report, I'll just make a bit more room here so you can see the full grader report. There we go. And you can see that student uh, received 100 for their first assignment. Absolutely fantastic. They completed both questions correctly, so they received 10. And then they've been graded as competent for assignment two. Now you can see there that the grading allows you to choose an actual grade value for these two or the one that we use scale for or we chose scale for shows the choice of no, no grade, not yet competent. And that was our zero, one and two value. So that means our first student has received 112. So you can see there 110, they're competent. They received the full score of 112. So that's what their grade book will look like or the grade book will look like for that student. Student two, uh, we only graded them as 70. They haven't passed yet, whereas this one has passed. And I'll show you something about that in a moment as well. Our student two's quiz one, they only answer one question correctly and they're not yet competent. Our student three only completed the quiz and only answered the second question correctly, which gave them a score of six. So there's our six there and no grade for this one, so a total of six. So our total for student two was 74 plus not yet competent, which is a value of one. So 74 plus one is 75. And that's how we get those numbers or those values to the grades. You'll also notice that I have a, a setting on here that shows or allows me to edit the grades from the gradebook. If your admin has set that, you can actually do the editing from in here and update grades or modify grades, which is called a grade override. That's where it happens inside the gradebook for a teacher that has that access to do that. I'm going to switch that back so it doesn't have that because then you can see what it looks like to a normal teacher that doesn't have the grading inside gradebook setting turned on. I switch back to the gradebook view of a normal teacher. If I go to grades now, you'll see it's a little bit different. I don't have the editing options to allow me to edit inside the gradebook or in the grader report. But you can now see the difference because we have the colors in there, which we didn't have before. So we have a tick and 100 to say they passed. And this, this was that option where we decided what the pass grade was in each of these activities. This one was 100 was the pass grade. Oh, 80, sorry, was the pass grade. Uh, this one here, competent was the pass grade, sorry, for assignment two. So competent is green, not yet competent is red because our pass grade was two for competent. Not yet competent is only worth one. And then our quiz here, the full 10 for our quiz gives us 10. Obviously, anything less than 10 isn't a pass, so the four and the six don't actually pass either. I'm now going to switch this to a student view so you can see what it looks like for a student when a student has a look at this exact same screen, but from their point of view as a student, because that will make more sense when we change our settings in just a moment. I'm now logged in as my student. So this is student number one that actually passed everything. And if that student goes to grades, has a look at grades, they have two options for grades. There is just the overview report, which is all of their courses, and then the user report, which shows them that they received 89.29% for their assignment. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't make sense at all, does it? This is the calculated weight. We're gonna look at how we do calculated weights in a moment, and this is dividing up the value of each of these activities based on their number value as a percentage of the whole course, or well, for this, this whole grade book. So we're gonna look at the weighting in just a moment, but let's jump to grades because the student's probably confused about that bit already. We'll fix that. Their grade is 100 they receive for this one, they receive 10 for this one, and competent. It's all green, so they know they've passed it all. They also have their feedback in here. They have their percentage for this particular assignment or this particular quiz, which they passed all with 100%. And then we have our total contribution to course, which is 89.29, which is the same as our calculated weight over here. And their total percentage is still 100% for their whole course. 
the value for the course or grade was 112. That's what they will see. We need to change that because that's not really suitable for a student. So let's go and look at two other things in Gradebook as a teacher that we need to change. Jumping back to Gradebook. Now we can go from our grader report, we can go to Gradebook Setup. And in Gradebook Setup, we have two things that we need to look at. One of them is we might want to rearrange our assignments in different order. We can just click on the arrow, click in the position we'd like the assignment to be moved to or the whichever item it is. And I can now put assignment one, assignment two, and the quiz in that order. I may want to put the quiz right at the top. So I click on the arrow, click the position where it goes to, and I can move the quiz up to the top. So that's moving things around, nice and simple. Next thing we're going to look at is weighting and what weighting actually means. So to do weighting, we're talking about the percentage value that each of these items have in relation to their whole course. So in this case, the quiz may be worth maybe 10%. So we'll set that on 10. For the assignment one, it was the one that's out of 100. So we might make that worth 60%. And then the last one, which is the competent, not yet competent, is worth only 30%. Now what I can do, I can actually leave the last one as not setting a value for it. And when I click Save Changes, it automatically makes sure that the last one totals 100. So if there's one you haven't chosen, it will automatically make that up to 30. But I'll tick them all so it stays the same. So 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So that's the weightings. If I click Save Changes again, we go and look at our students view and see what those changes did. In our student view, I'll refresh the screen. So our student now has quiz one at the top, assignment one, assignment two. The calculated weight or weighting of quiz one is 100%, 60% and 30%, which totals 100. So this is making a bit more sense to the student now as to what the values, actual values of the assignments and the quizzes are. And then we go to the contribute to course. It's now 10% contributed, 60, 30 and 100% and it's still 112. But what does this like for, look like for a student that hasn't completed all of these activities? Let's switch to a student that hasn't completed these activities and see what it looks like for them. We're back at our student two now, and when we go to grades, this is what it looks like for a student that hasn't completed everything. You can see the calculated weight is still 10, 60, and 30, which is good. The value that they scored uh, for this one, quiz one was four, which means it is 40% or 4% is the contribution uh, because it's weighted at 10%. 4 out of 10, 4% is the actual contribution to the course total. And then the same with 70, 70 out of 100, 70% uh, of the 60% is 42% and not yet competent because they did attempt it. Uh, they still received a one value for that, which is part of, so 50%. Of the 30%, so they still received a value because they attempted it, but their contribution for that is 15% until they pass, which then it will be a value of 30%. And still, uh, the range is still 112. They've received 68 in total of their grade that they received for this particular activity when it is weighted. How does that work? Uh, we've got 70 plus 4 plus 1 which would be 75, 76. You would think that that would make sense that it's 76, but because this grade number here, the actual value is weighted, it actually works it out as 60, 61% of 112. So to check that for you, quick calculator, we've got 112 is the total. We multiply that by 61% equals 68.32, which is the total there, 68.32. So this grade is actually a weighted grade rather than an absolute grade. Hope that helps. Now let's look at our last thing that we need to look at with this to finish this off. And that is how do we, actually there's two things. I'll try and be quick with them. How do we change the view, the, the format that students will see their grades in? And how do we hide items in here? We may not want them to see the calculated weight. We may not want them to see their feedback. Let's have a quick look at how to do that. So jump back to our teacher view. In our teacher view, we go into grades and into gradebook setup. Then for our, for example, assignment one, we may want assignment one to be viewed differently as a percentage or as a letter or something else. We can go to edit settings. We go to show more. 
and then show more we still have a grade to pass and everything there but we have an important one which is grade display type we can choose at the moment the default is real so that's the actual value out of 100 we can set in here where we look at a letter and a percentage instead or a letter and a real and a letter is a b c d e based on the values of those grades we'll decide whether they got an a or a b or a c but i want to show you what it looks like as let's say for example percentage with real in brackets so let's save changes jump to our student view reload it and you'll see now that we have a student view that shows a percentage and a letter so they got a c minus for 70 percent is what that student got jump back again in here and if we just go edit settings in our gradebook settings show more we can change that to instead of percentage letter we could go real and percentage save and close switch back to our student and you can see now that the result for the student is 70 which is 70 out of 100 which is actually 70 percent so we could change that to a percentage instead these are all the different options of how you can display your results to students by changing those grade settings. The last thing I want you to look at is how do we remove some of these columns because range might not be relevant. It might be too much for the student to see all of that. So let's have a look at how to do that. Switch back to our gradebook. Here we are back with our teacher in our grades. Instead of gradebook setup, we choose course grade settings. In course grade settings, this tells us what can be viewed for the student's user report. Here you can choose to show the percentage, we can show grades, weightings, let's hide the weightings to start with and let's also hide the feedback. So there are two things we can hide, let's go save changes, switch back to our student, reload and you'll see that our students grades now just show the grade that they received with that change setting as well which we can switch back if you don't like that. Uh, we do have the range still in there, percentage, we don't have the response from the teacher we do have our contribution to course total percentages in there as well. And that's as far as we're going to go with this. But one important thing that I'll show you in another video, if you're interested, so make sure you like and subscribe because it will be out soon. And that is how you can set up course completion based on the values of these grades so that you know when a student has actually completed all of the correct activities that require completion. And then that shows you then in the course completions report how all of these grades then go into course completion, which is really important for knowing that students have completed everything and it makes your life as a teacher much, much easier. I hope that's been helpful to you. I'm Chris Richter. Like I said, like and subscribe because there'll be another one on course completion coming out very, very soon.